There's been a ton of comments in the questions lately about how I have my charging box assembled. So really quick, we're gonna go over how I have it wired, all of that stuff, what it's capable of. It's awesome, check it out. Okay, you guys have probably already seen me hint at this a little bit, but this is my charge box. And I've posted a couple um, just overviews of what it is and why I use it. Uh, and today I just wanna go into detail. A lot of people have asked me like how I have it set up. So, let's pop this bad boy open. Oh yeah. And we'll turn on our little power strip here. Oh, nothing happened except that. Okay, that's cool. Well, actually we have everything set up on switches, so boo, 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 boo. All of our chargers come on, and these are operating at 25, well, 24 volts each. So each of these is receiving their full maximum watt input. Um, I'm using the Q6 Lite, but I actually just sold all four of these. I'm going to pull them out later and I'm swapping in with Q6 Pros, which are 300 watt. Um, so that's 12 amp uh, at six cell. Uh, so I should be able to be able to push 12 amp hours out of each of these ports. Um, a lot of people ask me like, why do you use uh, separate chargers why not just use a parallel board or something like that and to be honest the reason for that is that when i'm practicing especially like on the racer 4 if i crash i'm just gonna i'm gonna not finish flying that battery because the battery's only last for like a minute and a half two minutes plug it in and start charging it on its own without having to balance charge it before swapping in the next one so not having them on a parallel board allows me to just plug in a new one and then just double tap and start the next one so you know no matter what i just go chunk chunk double tap and it's charging and i just walk away and not worry about it anymore um in addition to the four chargers on these switches I'll shut those ones off we've got two fans now this these are 12 volt pc fans they're pretty powerful they actually push a lot of air and they suck it out through this vent it goes down through and up um uh, these are running off of a 12 volt back that i installed um for lipos and then when i am not running on lipo when i'm running on ac power there's actually two ac power supplies in there um one of them is a 24 volt and one of them is a 12 volts over here i'll show you in a sec uh, this switch turns on the auxiliary power so these output um straight to just xt60s so like if i have my hoda charger here i can add an extra charger on that end and then on this end, I've got my ISDT T8. It's that one, my bad. I don't remember what that one does. Uh, and then this turns on a, a 3.0 um, high voltage uh, USB charging port. So these do, this does three amps um, on USB three. So there's a ton of power that comes out of that. Um, and I'll show this off in a second, but I put a really, really big, powerful power supply. So you can see that it's running at 24 volts, which is great, um, but that doesn't mean anything if it can't do the current. So what I'll do here is I've got my electric skateboard battery, which is a monster, I know, um, but it's a 30 amp hour six cell, essentially. So one C is to charge at 30 amps, which is coincidentally what this charger here can do, given the proper input amperage. So start 30 amp hour LIHV. So that's ramping it way up. Still going. And remember, this is all off the internal power supply of this charging box. There's nothing else. There's no battery or anything plugged in. It's just all that's in here. So now that's asking for 30 amps almost, come on. 30 amp hours being pushed out to this giant battery, which is awesome. So I can charge this big thing in uh, roughly an hour. Then, but these four are still on and the power supply that's in here actually can provide another 30 amp hours. So I can charge, I can power the Hoda off of this one and I can run each of these chargers up to full bore and it will still be able to provide that amount of current. It's nuts. So you can see that even at 30 amp hour, 
we're only dropped down to 23.7 and we can still keep pushing it higher. So like, I'll drop this battery on. Eight S or eight volts or whatever. Let's see if this has got any charge in it. Run that one out at eight amps. Let's see, I know the battery for my saw is getting a little low. Grab that one. Run that at eight amps. Okay, so now between all of these, we're running six amps here, almost eight amps here. And this will be 8 amps soon. This one's still pushing 30. There goes the internal fans for the power supply. The air coming out is still relatively cool. So now we're getting 8. This one's pushing up finally. You know, we're getting... There's, that's the 24 volt fan coming on right there. It pushes it so the air from this fan is going through down the intakes for the power supply are right there and then it pushes out air to here and it comes right out oh that's actually this just kidding but anyway so we're asking for 50 total amps across all of this which is an insane amount of current and i can just charge everything at any amount of power at any time and i love it so let's pop this open. We'll show you kind of how we have it wired up. Hey, Paul here with your mid video plug. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that normal YouTube stuff. Um, and check out The Good Flight, the podcast we just launched a couple days ago. It's awesome. So this panel is basically free floating. Um, I had another uh, power uh, balance board that was actually mounted in like this. Um, but I've not gotten that exact one yet. And so I need to wire this in with the 3D printed mount, which I still have. But um, it's nice because I can pop this open. Actually, let's go ahead and turn this whole thing off. And so we can pop this open and take a look under the hood. Unfortunately, the wires are a little bit in the way to pull it all the way off. Um, but this is roughly what it looks like inside. <laughs> a little bit of a mess, but it's actually not as bad as it looks. So we can get this to balance. Okay, so from a high level, first of all, on this side, this is the max amps, 24 volt um, DC power supply. It takes uh, 240 volts and outputs 1500 watts. Uh, 24 volts at 62 and a half amps. Um, so this thing is an absolute monster and it's also very expensive and I paid for it because I wanted that power. Um, but it just runs one set of banana plugs out um, into this bus where it comes in here and here for the negative. And then I've made these leads that bounce across the buses and all of the power outputs come out there, grounds are there. And then on this other side, when it's powered in AC, there's a 12 volt um, regulator for running the fans and the USB. Um, and those, and that just jumps into the bus. Show it. That just bounces into the bus right here. So the 12 volt just comes out and into this bus and then I have a separate 12 volt power supply. The bus is not connected all the way across the bottom. Um, on the back, you've got your AC input, which just split out into the three um, mains for the AC power. And then I also have a DC input, um, which is a, I would say probably not bulky enough wire for what we're doing. Um, but if I plug in, I'll show you in a second, if I plug in a DC battery, it runs power straight to the bus and then up into the chargers. Um, and then it also takes power off the bus into this uh, five amp regulator, or sorry, 12 amp regulator, 12 volt regulator, and powers the 12 volt stuff off of it. So a, a plugging in DC, whatever voltage you want up to six cell, um, you can power the entire thing off of that and the fans will still work off of 12 volt. Um, so it's AC DC in that sense. Got to set this back on top just kind of press fits which is pretty nice like you don't have to i don't have to screw it in or anything it usually 
sits pretty well just like that it's not resting or anything it's just free floating uh, so i'll go around to the back so back here again you've got your ac input which is on that and then you can choose one or the other and just plug in a dc power supply of some sort peek around now it's got 25 volts and the chargers will run and the fans will run all on 12 volt so you've got a badass giant monster of a charger um again i probably wouldn't run this on you know on dc for like super high amperage right I, it's gonna start um getting the wires too hot um, i could make it capable of doing that but when you're running off of a battery i'm not going to be trying to chew through 30 amp hours to charge this giant pack i'm just charging little field packs in the in the field so my goal is to take this to practice with me set up in two seconds i can just pop this thing open if i need more chargers i just add more chargers with the extension leads um, inside of it i keep you know a big set of banana plugs for the car another xt60 some adapters and all of those literally just leave here in the case like this close it up we're good to go to the field all of this was just to show off the uh charger it's it's an awesome tool i'm so excited to have it kind of almost done last thing i need to do is swap out those uh isdtq pluses or uh lights for the pro version which uh, i can get a little bit more power a little bit more juice out of um, without having to plug in external um, chargers so that's going to be awesome and then uh yeah i'm so excited about the project thanks to gatebreaker for helping me put the original version together i've just kind of taken it and put my own little little touches on it i'm really really excited about how it is so um, thanks for checking this out. Be sure to go check out the Good Flight podcast. We just launched it a couple days ago. We're really excited about it. I want you guys to see that. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, frustrations about this thing, I would love to hear them down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, all that stuff. So thank you very much and stay flying.